We're making great progress in our application and learning Laravel, so we're picking right back up. If you missed the first part of this, this is part two, where we're gonna be talking about database seeders. In the previous lesson, we put together a model factory for our companies and created some fake data for our application. Now, I wanna work on creating an entire world worth of data for the application in a single command. And for that, we're gonna use database seeders. So let's explore database seeders now. If we go back to our application, we have this seeds directory inside database. And this database seeder, as it ships, doesn't do anything. As you can see, it only has one method, and the one call to this user's table seeder is commented off. So it's really not doing anything at all. So what can we do in here? Inside the run method, you can run anything you need to do to create stuff for your application. And by stuff, I mean users, I mean companies, anything that your application is going to need for development purposes. Now, this is great because a lot of times you're going to have to erase your entire database and generate all of this data again just because you had to make a change to a migration. So it's great to have model factories and seeders to help you just put some data back in the database so you can continue development. And that's what a database seeder will do. So let's check out this command. I will uncomment this command and let's try to get this command working. As it ships out of the box, it actually doesn't work. And I'm gonna show you how to run this seeder. Let's head back to the terminal and let's take a look at PHP Artisan. If we scroll up a little bit, we have this db colon seed. This command seeds the database with records. That sounds like exactly what we need to do. So PHP Artisan db colon seed and we get an error. Like I said, this command doesn't actually work when it ships with Laravel, but we can make this command work. So what it's saying is that it cannot find this users table seeder class. So how can we create a seeder? Let's scroll up and with every Laravel thing that we have, of course, we do have a seeder command. So make seeder, of course, generates a seeder for us. So let's do that now. PHP artisan make a seeder and the name of the seeder is going to be users table seeder okay seeder created successfully let's go back to php storm and now in our database directory we do have this users table seeder okay so this class and this class basically look exactly identical but the difference is that this database seeder think of it as the orchestrator of this entire operation this is the main file, and then we're gonna have some smaller files for each of the tables that you need to fill. So in this case, this is related to the users table. Now, as we learned before, we have that factory, right? We learned this in the previous episode. So in a factory, we can whip up a user, right? We know we can actually whip up several users. If we do, as a second argument, we can put three, for example, to create several users. And then we need to run the create method on it. So this is the exact same thing we did in the previous episode through Tinker, except now we're putting it in a class. So we have factory, app, user, class, and we're gonna whip up three users. Great. Let me jump to table plus just to show you what our database currently has. So we have these users right here, right? That's all we have. Now let's run that dbc command one more time. So php artisan db colon seed and this time it doesn't fail. This time it does work. And let's go back to table plus and let's check out our table. So there we are. We have three additional users to our table. Okay. What if we wanted to add companies, for example, automatically? Right now we have these companies, but when I run dbc, I also want to add some companies to the database. So how would we do that? Well, the whole sequence goes something like this. PHP artisan make me a seeder and the name of the seeder will be company's table seeder now the naming convention of this is just simply to use the plural and then table seeder now it looks like i missed an s here so there we go company's table seeder that would be the naming convention of this truthfully you can name it whatever you'd like but you're going to end up with a lot of files that start with user a lot of files that start with company and it's just easier if you actually specify what that class is in the name it just makes it easier to browse through your files so let's add that company seeder right now. 
and let's go back to PHP Storm. And now we have this company's table seeder. Now, since we already added a company factory in the previous episode, we can simply just use factory to whip up some companies. So that's app company. And let's do 10 companies, create. And now remember, we have to go back to the original class, this database seeder class, and add that call method to that new company seeder. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Remember, this is the file that orchestrates everything. Database seeder class sits atop of all of your individual seeders. So let's say companies, table seeder, class. And now when we run that DB seed again, we're gonna get a call to the user's table seeder and a call to the company's table seeder. Let's try that now. PHP artisan DB seed. And sure enough, we called the user's table and the company's table. And if we go back to table plus, and we hit refresh, there we are. We have some more companies, and of course we do have some more users that we didn't have before. Again, the reason being is that we're generating all of this automatically. All right, so let's do one final one for our customers. Let's quickly create a factory and then a seeder for our customers. How can we do that? Let's jump back to the terminal and let's say PHP artisan, make me a factory, customer factory, and I also want a seeder. So PHP artisan, make me a seeder for customers table seeder. All right, so now we have the two things together. Now we just need to set up our factory and then set up our seeder. Let's do that now. Back to PHP storm. Let's take a look at our customers factory first. And so of course it's empty as always. Let's take a look at the migration. So create customers table migration. And it looks like we need a company ID, it looks like we need a name, an email, and an active column. All right, so now let's handle this company ID first. So this company ID is really related to another company, right? We need to be able to generate a company alongside with a customer. You can't have a customer if you don't have a company. Interesting, so how do we tackle that? So that's actually fairly easy. Let's jump back to the customer's factory and let's say the company ID is, and what can we possibly put this? Can you put one? Yes, you could put one, but the problem is that if company ID one doesn't exist, meaning the company doesn't exist in the database, this will fail. So what can we do instead? Instead, we can actually put a call to our factory, right from a factory. You can create a factory using a factory. So we'll say factory, create me a company. Why not? Of course we can do that. So create that. And then what we actually need is the ID, but Laravel will take care of that for us in the background, which is pretty cool. The one thing I missed was that I forgot to pass the model name into the create factory method. So we can simply just say app customer in here. So that way it is related to the correct model. All right, what else do we need? We need a name, an email and an active column. All right. So name, email, and we need an active column. Okay, easy enough. So for name, let's use faker again. So faker name. Now for email, we can use exactly the same thing that the user factory used, which is this unique safe email. So let's copy that over and bring it in. So that's faker, unique, safe email. And then finally for active, we could just give it a one. That way it defaults to an active user. If we need to override this, we can, and it's actually fairly simple. All right, so we have our customer factory ready to go. So the next thing we need to do is tackle the factory seeder. And here it is. So customers, oh, whoops, it looks like I forgot the S in customers. No problem. Let's rename that file now to customers, refactor, and there we go. All right, no big deal. So what do we need to do here? Well, here, it's same thing. We need to whip up a factory for our customers class, and then we need to run the create method on it. Now, I am importing customers here at the top. I've done it both ways. Either one will work. If you wanna avoid this extra line up here, then of course you can inline the way we've been doing and say app customer, and then you don't need that import at the top. Either one will work. All right, so one final step is of course, we need to tell our database seeder to please call that new customer's table seeder. So customer's table seeder, and there we are. I'm gonna hit save, 
And what I want to do is I want to delete the entire database and start from scratch. So to do that, we can run PHP artisan migrate fresh. And that's it. Everything is empty. Let's go to table plus hit refresh. Do we have any companies? Nope. Customers? Nope. Nothing. We don't have anything at all. Our database is totally, totally blank. And if we go to our actual project, you see that we can't even log in. We don't have anything at all. So now we can run PHP artisan DB seed. So it looks like it can't find my customers table seeder. The reason for this is probably because composer did not detect that we renamed that file. No problem. If you ever get a weird error like that, we can run composer dump dash auto load. And that should fix it. Let's run the command again, PHP artisan DB seed. And now we get a different error. It says the class company is not found. I must have missed an import here somewhere. Yep, sure enough. So it looks like here we're using company, but we did not fully complete the path. So let's say app company and that should fix it. All right, let's try one last time. And let's see what's going on here. Ah, there it is. So we have the wrong character. I bet you saw that. Let me fix that really quick. And here it is. Aha. There we go. All right. One final, final time. And let's check it out. PHP artisan DB seed. And finally, here we go. We are working. Let's jump back to table plus hit refresh. And sure enough, we have our users. We have our customers and companies. Perfect. So obviously we were able to put all of this together in two commands, right? We ran PHP artisan fresh and then we ran our seeder. But as it turns out, there's even a shortcut for that. And we can run PHP artisan migrate fresh dash dash seed. What this will do is give us a brand new fresh database and then seed it for us. And there it is. You see the migrations and then you see our seeders. So single command and we have an entire world for our application using Laravel's table seeders.